Hi gang, it's Kathy Vick, Deeply Awake. I'm wearing lipstick today. Mwah. Kissy, kissy. Um, I want to talk. I've got some things to say. Um, last night was a big deal. And uh, most of it, I tried to write it down. It's like, uh, those don't, those, those little notations don't make no sense, girly. This morning, huh? Boy, did I go far. But uh, re-entry was uh, junked up, was hard. So um, I know not to, that these uh, medicines that I take, they blast me open, but it's really hard to integrate the information. So I don't think I want to use them. And I didn't realize that it would have that effect on me energetically, but it sure does. But I get hungry for going so far. Ooh, I can go so far. But then it's like the 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 capsule I'm in disintegrates as I make re-entry into our atmosphere. It's like, oh, oh, holy crap. This isn't very, very, very uh, uh, elegant. So what I, what, what I learned, though, oh, my goodness. Well, it started out slow. I began to think. Um, hold the phone here. Let's think about last year at this time. Just th this last year at this time. Has anything changed? i got to get rid of this hair. Has anything changed? I was sort of floored because it was just it's a different life. It, it just is. I made a list of the things that are different. One by one, the things that were in my life, I wrote them down last year. Work. My um, love relationships, my relationship with my family members, my situation financially, medically, my living situation with my son, my relationship with my ex-husband, all of that, all of it has changed. And I don't know, it just it had to kind of caught me up, it caught me up, it's, what? How did that happen? Well, it happened every day, and it happened um, sometimes while you saw it. Was it all uh, like sweetness and light and hugs and kisses from fairies and angels? No. Uh, it wasn't. It was me blasting through the dark, not only within me, but without. I was getting to know what this, what this uh, shadow was all about, and just what I was and what I was becoming. And it wasn't something that I could get in one day. I realized that recently. There's a reason why I was in amnesia as long as I was and why the veil was still on me like it was. This is a lot to embody. Let me give you an example. Last night, um, I forget the circumstances. Oh. It was a it was a party, and it was at my friend's house, family friends, and and they were inviting their their work friends and bowling alley friends and stuff. So it was just you know, I was sort of the the I was just the the other friend, right? And um, then the friends start coming in, and a lot of them are dudes, and they're all really really nice, and I kind of like to hang out with dudes, especially if they're not, especially if they're. Um, unhappy in their marriage or they're not not married because um well i don't know i get a lot of i get a lot of sugar so it wasn't like that Every, all the men were you know already attached and uh, and uh tamed and um it was most of them and it was very very pleasant they were um very very well well managed people it's amazing what a female influence will do to a male um, and uh, I just sat there and I, I, I can see in retrospect how very different I was from everyone else. And yesterday I was so cool with that. I was so happy. All day long I, I had this other happiness and I want to tell you about it. It's this really, really super happy place where I don't know the my perspective shifts and um, I'm not in the moment anymore I can see long range and um, I'm very aware of what's going on emotionally and karmically and all that stuff in the moment 
But I'm too involved with looking at my thumb, drinking my coffee, having thoughts. I made it my priority to uh, be in that tender place of just really being simply happy. And I was able to maintain that. It was really fun. At the party, um, I finally, I, I spent a lot of time with the kids just hanging and with the grown-ups hanging. And then there was a time at the fire pit. And it was around there. I didn't want to go outside even because there were so many men and so many strangers. And my, my hostess was a little bit uh, taken back by that and was very sweet to me. And I realized how strange, what a strange girl I am. And, you know, she said, I did, oh, I'm, she said, I'm sorry, I didn't realize this would cause distress. I said, baby, don't worry about it, it's a party. It doesn't cause distress, I just don't want to be in it right now, I'll be in it later. But I could see then, and I didn't feel bad about it, I just loved myself, it was so sweet, and she was loving me. I took a little break, and I did go out to the fire pit, where the dudes were, and it was fun. It was fun, I love dudes, I love them. I love, I love everything about them. I love the way they think, I love the way they talk, and they minded themselves. They, none of them got sexual, and that was really, I really appreciated that a lot, because I would have left had anybody cracked open any of that. Um, there was nobody to talk to, really. There was a lot of people to listen to, and I realized, oh yeah, well, you know, that's most of life. Um, I don't, I really, it's not about me being on the stage. I really like this, so I just kind of settled in. I looked up at the stars. I felt the fire. And then I looked at the logs. There were three at the bottom and one on the top. And there was only one of those bottom logs lit, and the fire wasn't very bright. And I thought, I really want to have that one closest to me, that log at the bottom. I want it to light up. It would make me so happy, and I'm cold, I want to be warm. I want to see it go, and I saw it in my mind's eye. And then almost immediately went poof, and it went into flame. And it played a little bit, and I would look away, and it would, you know, stop, and I'd go back, and it would start. And then, it, you know, it said, and I, we were just playing with you, and it, poof, it just burst into these beautiful flames. And I wanted the middle log then to light up, but I knew it had been burnt already and then the one that on the end the other end it was doing its thing and it wouldn't be appropriate to ask it to burn any brighter because it was almost spent so I just concentrated on that fresh new log that was on the top and sure enough and um, I realized that my best friend around that fire you know I certainly have friends around that fire certainly do People who have represented for me, people who love me. But in that moment, we weren't talking. It was me and the fire, and I felt so at peace. I didn't. I didn't need anybody to know. And I, I thought it was really fun. I looked at the burning log, and I, I heard them say, "Yeah, well, it's just consciousness over physics, dear." And um, although I know that there are still always going to be those who will say, well, that was just, um, that wasn't you. The part of me that, that remains, that has those kind of things to say, is quite weak, thankfully. And I just felt more of my time in celebration than in doubt. And um, I realized I'm a little bit of a, a star child no matter where I go. And um, maybe it's not about fitting in at all. Maybe I already fit in. Maybe my function was to warm up that fire. And I was really glad to do it. And then it was time to go home. La la la. So, um... When at home, in bed, I, I had these realizations, and one of them was I was moved to watch a, a channel, and then I watched another one, and I don't know, sometimes it just hits me. This is actually real. They're not the devil. I'm not crazy.
and this is real. I know. But it's in those moments, because I had the moment like that last night. What that really means comes home to me then. And it's then that I'm taken away. And I realized, like, last night, that's what it's always been when I've been taken away. When I realize it's real, when I personalize it, when I acknowledge the truth. And uh, so I, I acknowledged some truths, and I saw how my life has changed so drastically in every single aspect of my life that um, was troubling me is better. Um, it involved effort and it involved, uh, it involved um, being open. And it involved not even knowing it was happening until I look back. How do you like that? Um, what's been causing me the most peace, though, I must say, is a very beautiful understanding that I've received uh, the last few days. I haven't really wanted to talk about it a whole lot because it's very technical. And I don't want to really explain all the technical stuff at the moment. What I want to explain is that um, I figured out a way to apply this band of, of consciousness, these dimensions going from 1 to 13 and beyond, these consciousness realities, these dimensional realities. It's been really a focus what it means to be multidimensional and how I express here. I realized in a flash, and I just am so glad to pass this on. This is a multidimensional reality. It's a multidimensional world, earth, and people. And it always has been. It always has been. I had the teachers visit me in the 90s. My world was like this then. Everything was synchronous. Everything was touched. And what I created was beyond the beyond. I didn't do it sitting in my rocking chair. I did it by applying myself and applying effort. But in those years, the energy was like how it is now. I was given ancient knowledge. There are these kind of interactions happening all over the world all the time. Insertions of very, very high frequency love and information. Step down, of course, for the entity who's requesting it or needing it. But in my case, it wasn't stepped down all that much. It's coming to own that I came, I did, I came in open and then there were events that occurred which required and allowed me to bring in more of my soul. It was a stair step thing, like blowing up a balloon. And um, over time, more and more and more of who I really am came to introduce itself to me and to express itself in reality and to m merge and meld with me by agreement and request. And like I've said, you know, this whole life is about ascension. I always knew that and I, I was okay with that. I wanted that. So my top priority was my spiritual life, and um, I saw everything as a reflection of my spiritual life. And I still do. More now than ever before. More now than ever before. I understood that there's a band of consciousness from 1 to well beyond 13. And between the second and the third, there's a physical barrier. Thankfully, there had been a break in that barrier. I've told the story just a couple of times. 
And there have been very low vibratory inserts that we've carried and we've brought home during this project. It wasn't discussed all that much, but we have done such incredible things for others who were needing to go home just like us. That's a low vibratory reality. Then I see the third, fourth, and fifth. They're like a, in a band of red, uh, orange, yellow. And then there's a membrane. And to me it looks like an eye, but it also looks like a heart valve. It's flesh colored and it's a slit and it's circular and it just opens up. So yeah, I suppose you could think it's vaginal, but it doesn't look like that either. It just looks like a slit in and that's mate should be there. Its function is that. And then there's all of this reality. A reality that cannot be um, expressed or really explained except through experience. And there's a barrier between this reality that is so multidimensional and interconnected and beautiful and this one. It doesn't mean that it's on the same continuum. You're not in different houses. There's just a barrier. And then I see the tube and I see up by the, they won't tell me exactly where, I think it's the 10th, between the 9th and 10th, which is odd. I guess not. There's another one. But what I see at that point is just, it keeps getting more galactic, more galactic, and there's a door there, and if you want to open the door, well, be my guest, is what it says. And if you don't want to, you don't have to go any further, baby. There's lots to explore here. So basically, six, seven, eight, nine are ours to inhabit and uh, come to terms with and express on this earth on this earth, not translated into the fifth or fourth or third, but simply expressing. And I think that what I, unless I give you that picture, I don't, I don't want to go too much into the barriers except to say that they don't exist unless you think they exist. Basically, if there's a barrier, there's a barrier. If you understand, there really is no barrier. Is there a barrier? The, th the trick is popping back down there to, you know, deposit seeds or to tangle or to heal um, is costly to me anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to be that dense anymore. I understand it's very pleasant and uh, kind to take these beautiful big energies and squeeze them down into a smaller consciousness, but I don't want to do it anymore. And I think that's what I was doing for humanity here on these tapes of just, you know, here's a, here's a hit of light. How do you explain all this nonsense? Go. <laughs> so, um, the beauty of it is, if there are yogis in the mountains who are spaced out and living for thousands of years, if there are monks and nuns and meditators all across the land who are holding high, high vibration and maintaining it, how third dimensional reality are we? And I think I'd really buy into the lie that this was a this was just the third. You can expect nothing but the third here. <laughs> no. No. I meet shaman here. I meet angels here. I meet goddesses here. And they're certainly not functioning. from their wounds and scars and attachments and limitations. They acknowledge that those things 
exist or existed, but hmm. maybe that's what I've been called to do. And it's been hard. Just ignore the pain. Didn't I come here to fix the pain? Isn't that part of my process? And now I just abandon all these people who are crying and hurting? That doesn't seem very fair or nice. But I do get it that I've tried so hard. I've presented myself to people. You would be surprised at the responses I get sometimes. I've talked about it. It's like this blast of, of really, really white-hot rage just for doing the work I do. And others who just react in such bizarre ways. I just see that now as more of the chasm, you know? And the more urgent and the more close to the bone the complaints are, well, at any more, that just tells me the more triggered they've gotten. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. And so, um, and I, you know, I, I may be unskilled with some of the things I say. Maybe not. But it's never my intention to come out here and say, Hey, hey you a-holes, I hate your guts and here's why. Here's why you're never going to get anywhere, you bastards. I don't do that. It's been more of how do I how do I live with myself if I can't help people and do I need to keep telling do I need to keep putting myself in situations among people who don't like what I run? Do I need to keep doing that? Even if they say they love me, they, all they can do is just freaking beat me up. What do I do with that? How do I behave around them? Well, some of that just needs to be limited. And I'm realizing with this with this elevation and this it's it's a very curious elevation because I used to be someone I realized, oh, this is one of the reasons I have trouble with my memory when I'm especially at work, I'm so in the moment that it's to the exclusion of everything. Nothing else exists except this. I can't think about going out and partying. I can't think about my friends. I can't think about... I'm thinking about this. And the thing was that when uh, work was spectacularly unpleasant, well then, it kind of feels like it's going to always be unpleasant. It took me a long time to figure that one out. Well, it's great to be in the moment that, that uh, committed. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's spectacular. What I'm realizing is I can move my focus over just to here. So I'm not so much focused on them, whoever they are. I'm focused on my thumb, the temperature of the wind, what those leaves are saying. I mean, it just goes on and on if I stay within my own reality. Things work out really good really good and that seems to have been an admonition I've been um, avoiding thinking it somehow selfish or inappropriate or something I don't know but I have the physical evidence that it's really very uh, healthy, healthy for me to stay in my moment not your moment my moment for me and from here, I really can reach out in a very, very spectacular way that's more authentic. And it, it's highly paradoxical. So I'll mention one more paradox before I leave, and that is that of narcissism. I read an article, The Ten Giveaways of Narcissistic Personality or something. Hold on. And it was using the new DSM. And I read the points. And um, every single one of them... Oh, shit. That's my spiritual self. <gasps> That's my spiritual self. <gasps> That's my spiritual self. And then, down below, it got into the um, social aspects of narcissism. 
the internal aspects are that of um, being deluded with believing that you're important basically that you're perfect that you um, are okay in this world I mean all of the things I saw I was not only I wasn't just thinking about me I was thinking about the new age community and what what ascension is what we're actually saying we are individually and collectively connected to galactic energies and we have access to galactic information is that delusional is that grandiose well if I'm okay with the information and I can hold it I don't give a crap about proving it if I can simply be it uh, it makes it a little bit silly to prove it and so I, I take issue with the um, turning turning self a love and self knowledge uh, malignant the bottom few were about socialization and you know that's where I had to really really examine I don't use people as objects for my gratification I don't go to others so they can fill me up it's always mutual always always mutual and if it's not that's usually the reason for me to end the relationship I, I don't want to be involved with people who don't want to share um, behavior that uh, objectifies individuals or or changes them into basically a drug to decrease your discomfort within your own body I don't do that I don't take from people I just say what I think and if that turns out to be highly narcissistic and uh, painful and horrible well then so be it I think it's all a bunch of um, stone throwing myself so I don't think that's a road map I think that um, it's sort of gross to label something delusional or grandiose <laughs> especially when it comes to the inner realms because the people making those judgments are incapable by virtue of their behavior and their thoughts it's obvious self-empowerment is um, dangerous and it seems the mindset is it always leads to malignancy within relationship so I really had to had to tease that one apart especially this morning but I know what I did with that fire I couldn't conjure Merkaba. I sat down thinking oh, I wish I could conjure Merkaba here and I was sort of bored I didn't have anybody to talk to nobody was talking to me and I really I mean I was giving eye contact and going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to everybody appropriately I had nothing to add I just wanted to play with the fire and I know uh, from my training that I can change things with with my love and I did because it was fun and the fire wanted me to I was more than happy to oblige that makes me different it makes me proud and happy it sets me apart as does how I treat others so um, I think that uh, many of these labels are they're, they're nice attempts but they're um, 
designed much like um, the um, liturgical work to um, plant seeds of doubt within the human being as to what they're capable of and how possible it is for them to be highly functional without harming others. And um, so there you go. It's just not worth comparing myself to anyone. So I realized that um, the argument, the argumenting, the, the arguing, <laughs> the arguing that I do, in that nasty place I get into, um, that slow agreement field stuff too. It's fear-based. It's urgent. I read something by, uh, by uh, is it Barbara Handclaw? And it, one of them, one of the people that she 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 channels said um, that you know many people will get tired of all the apocalypses, and maybe some of this apocalyptic stuff is to get you to the place where you realize you have some you have responsibility here. And I don't know. The last few weeks, it's been like that because I really don't feel like the pressure I used to feel. It's just gone. And so I don't really feel like I have a deadline anymore, and that's very unusual for me. It just is. There's always something next, something next. I know I have events and wonderful things coming up, but I don't know. I just feel... full. I know I can get full by just looking at my thumb, or looking up at the sky, we're looking down at a fire. And it's got nothing to do with getting full by looking into someone else's eyes. Hearing them say, I see you. I know you. I love you. Thank you. As I am regarding them in awe. thinking and saying, I see you, I know you, I love you, thank you. I'll get it where I can take it. I'll take it where I can get it. When human beings in front of me are open and able to handle me, and I'm called in. I'm, I'm not a really strictly a daily life kind of girl. And uh, the events of daily life don't fascinate me unless there's some deeper meaning. And I'm no longer embarrassed or afraid about that. I'm proud of it. So, um, I've sort of been left in the lurch today. I have some things I've got to do for the person who left me in the lurch. So I need to take care of that while I take care of myself and feed and honor myself. And I have a very lovely thing I'm looking forward to this evening. I'm so excited. I can't do decomp this year due to a number of different circumstances. But I get to be with a sweet, sweet, oh, such a sweet friend. And there'll be, um, there'll be lights, and there'll be s s uh, s music, and dancing, and gyrating, and raunchiness, and hopefully a whole bunch of nastiness. All in like full celebration, and humor, and um, brotherhood. Mmm. And uh, so, I'm hooking back in. I know it's getting late, but I want to tell you one more little miracle, okay? I don't know, about maybe a month ago, 
I said out loud, I just said problem solving, and I realized, man, being a storyteller with a whole bunch of kids would be fun. And then I swear to God, like two days later on Facebook, there's a training for storytellers for kids through the through the, the school system. And so a lady called me yesterday and said, yeah, my email's broken. I realize we haven't gotten back to you. Are you still interested? We're so interested in you. I said, heck yeah. So the training is free, and it's four separate sessions. And she said afterwards, um, you're connected not only to a, a network of storytellers in the Denver metro, but to a national group. And there's storytelling circles, and there's all kinds of fun stuff. So she ended the phone call by saying, just congratulations, you found yourself a new family. What? And I realized as I was bumping around the house, so much of this is just being able to lift up my head. Just enough to see what comes next. I do have a date book. See, it's one of these that when I get caught... Uh, in a doctor's office or whatever, I can do doodles, and I'm using it, and um, it's dawning on me that I need to put some structure down. I know these things are um, elementary to many people. They aren't to me, and I have prayed and prayed and prayed to have someone come and walk with me and help me, and I don't have that, and so I'm left with... Um, planning, organizing, and making something go for two, feeling really um, outgunned a lot of the time. And that's hard because it makes me feel small, that I can't seem to get a handle on these things that everyone else has got figured out. How many people have figured out how to talk to a fire? Huh? It's just worth asking. I'm excited about these uh, tools and about these old, well-mastered skills coming back. I was given a dispensation that allowed me to do this work and it required certain things of my uh, mental abilities and my verbal abilities and written language abilities and uh, didn't really have a whole lot to do with planning so I really have been going kind of moment to moment um, apocalypse to, ecop to apocalypse and now I just feel as if now is the time to really sort of once again like I did in, in 2014 and 2015 to find that cord of joy that runs through some of the activities I do and, and many of the people I know and the view when I look up and go forward. Blessings and grace and goodwill to you today and in all days. Selah.